All right, guys, what we're going to talk about this morning, I just got off the phone with one of my new wholesalers, and what he was asking me about, of course, is the biggest question that we always get asked is which kind of cars that we buy that we make money off of. And, you know, when you're buying a car at, at the auto auction, it's really hard. You're going with the intentions of making money. So, you number one, you got to have confidence on it. Uh, when you're going in, you're going to buy the kind of cars that you like to buy, or are you going to buy the cars that are no-brainers for making money? And my model that we're going to talk a little bit about here, and Les is beginning to follow it, and he's going to have some input here in a second. But what we do when we're going in uh, at the auction, I have a model that I use, and that's the under $3,000 retail car. Uh, people are all the time looking for cars that they can retail under $3,000 or they can buy under $3,000. So what we're doing is looking for the cars that we can sell at that price point. For me, that's just an easy price point. And when I say about a price point, what matters to me and the things we're going to talk about is how fast that I flip a car. Uh, I just got through flipping a 2007 Altima. Um, it was a very nice car. I paid top dollar for it. Uh, I wound up having to pay 2800 for it. I spent 150 on it for the catalytic converter and sold the car uh, for $4,200, which is a nice little profit there. But it took me 15 days, and I actually showed the car to two different people uh, before I sold it. Lots of inquiries on the car, lots of inquiries great price car and so like I said I made about eleven hundred dollars on that car but by the same token I had a 2005 Ford Escape that I paid twelve hundred for and I sold it for two grand which only made about eight hundred dollars but it took three days and the first person that looked at the Ford Escape bought it now which car was the best investment I made 11 on one, I made 800 on the other. On one, I held it for 15 days and showed it to two or three people. On the other one, I held it for three days and showed it to one. That's important to me because the longer you hold a car, the more enthusiasm you lose in selling that car. That car, you're just like anybody else. Uh, you've got to have that transfer of enthusiasm when you get ready to sell your car. If you do not have that enthusiasm, you're costing yourself money. I'm more enthusiastic when I'm selling a $3,000 car, offering a $3,000 car, than I am when I'm offering a $5,000 car. I've got too much money tied up in it, and I'm, I'm really becoming more of a salesman at that point, and I'd rather become or be an order taker and just produce a $3,000 car than be a salesman trying to sell a $5,000 car. What's your input? Is that? I totally agree. As I've been doing this now for a number of months, I had a background of 25 years in the automobile industry as an owner management guy, but the model that we're using today is just an unbelievable model if you follow it. Sometimes it's hard to follow it if you try to buy a car that is something you particularly like, but it may not be something that the marketplace is going to be particularly liking. We've been practicing at this, at least I've been practicing at it now for a few months, and I've been relatively successful. But basically, by following this model and buying cars that you can retail for $19.95, $24.95, $29.95, you're going to be able to attract people's attention because they have that money. You know, the main thing that we need to talk about here is where our market lies, where our customers are going to look for cars. Let's face it, they're going to uh, Craigslist, uh, they're going to Facebook, they're going to places like that, that uh, uh, that's where the market is on cars. So if you're going to sell a, a, a car in those markets, 
you're not competing against dealers that are out there that have auto trader they have ebay they have their own custom websites you don't want to compete with those guys let those guys market their cars the way they want to and you cater to the craigslist shopper you cater to the facebook shopper to the people that have limited amount of income and want to get out of debt this is a key thing here most of my customers would prefer to drive a two thousand dollar car and not have any payments on it then buy a two thousand dollar car from a buy here pay here dealer and owe monthly payments on it so you got to think like your customer is thinking don't think about the car you're not selling cars here you are selling people opportunities to get out of debt or to drive inexpensive vehicles so you've got to forget about the car itself think about what you're doing for the people that become your customers you got any input on that yeah the basic uh, model is primarily the first thing you do when you're at the auction is you see a car that you have worked in your workbook as Randy's gone over with you this is the most important thing you go over your workbook you've got a plan you only bid on the cars that you have actually put through your workbook schedule. I made the mistake of bidding on a car a few, well, last month that that car came back and has been biting me in the butt for a whole month. I now own that car at about $3,000. I bought it for 1000 So you've got to be very careful in following all of the plans that Randy's laid out in his model. The minute you deviate from that plan and that marketing strategy, you will start to implement your own plan, and most of the time that plan won't work. So it's pretty simple. The $3,000 and under, under market is absolutely the best. Working with your Craigslist people, those people they need a car, they want a car, and remember that car's a new car to them no matter how old a car it is. So it's just been an easy model to follow, but that's if you follow it. All right guys, we're gonna shut off here and uh, go on to the auction. We're picking up a few uh, flips today and uh, get them cleaned up ready for the weekend. Uh, the main thing I want you to understand here is, is there's a certain recipe you know, there's not any one thing that we do here that makes it work. It's just like baking a cake. You're gonna have to follow the recipe exactly to make money at doing it. You don't follow the recipe, you leave out something, you're decreasing your chances in having a good success at this or having a good cake. So stay, uh, keep things in perspective, do your homework, get skillful at doing it, and you're not going to have any problems with making money. That's right.